And if not, it would be McCauley. Here comes Harvey. Watch number 79. He just went right around him, didn't he, Frank? Well, you can't uh, talk around it. You've got to hit it head on. Kirkland is up. He's up. But the number of injuries in the league now has become startling. And I don't know what can be done because of the nature of this game of football. But certainly there should be an instant new study. And I'm sure Pete Rozelle's in favor of it. Together with Ed Garvey, who runs the Players Association. To find, as the have ends, every possible way to protect the men who play the game. And that is the end of the first half. The Cowboys leading the Colts 21 to nothing. Stay with us. Exciting halftime activities from yesterday's play. We're back live at Texas Stadium, the halftime score, Dallas 21, the riddled Baltimore team and nothing. Now for our halftime highlights, which are being brought to you by, that's the way the scoring went, Dennison on a one-yard route, Starback on a 94-yard pass to Tony Dorsett, and what a play by Dorsett, and then Starback on an eight-yard pass to Billy Joe Dupree. Now to our halftime highlights, which are being brought to you by Metropolitan Life. Come to Metropolitan Bolinen and simplify your life. It's a big day in the National Football. As we turn our attention to yesterday's NFL highlights, we begin with number 34, the Heisman Trophy winner from Texas, making his debut at Atlanta for the in touchdown. That made it seven to nothing. The oil is in the first quarter. But in the second quarter, June Jones, the man who displaced Steve Bartkowski, found Bubba Bean alone, took advantage of a Houston blitz. That made it 7-7. Seven to seven. And then, still in the second period, Cliff Parsley trying to punt for Houston. The ball blocked by Tommy Pridemore. And button, button, who's got the football? A comedy of errors. Apparently Houston had it, but no. 45, Tom Moriarty. And Atlanta took a 14-7 lead. That's what it was at halftime. Then in the third quarter, Earl Campbell again, swinging right, going down the sideline. This young man is going to be, barring injury, one of the great stars in NFL history. And then subsequently, after that 25-yard joint by Campbell, that pass from Pastorini to Richard Castor, the ex-Jet, recently acquired by the Oilers, 14-14. After that, Freddie Stein for kick two field goals for Atlanta. And Johnny James with this kind of kick. And Houston in for the rest of the game. Watch it now. Watch how it's kept in play. Brilliantly there. And then out on the one-yard line. So, Atlanta upsets the Houston Oilers in their opening game at Fulton Stadium in Atlanta. 20-14. to that's Jack Pardee, now the coach of the Washington Redskins, coach of the Bears a year ago. This is action against New England at Scottsboro. First play from scrimmage. Joey Theisman, now the first string quarterback. To Danny, lightning bugs from West Virginia. A refugee from the Giants. And that brilliant play, good for 63 yards, set up a field goal that made it 3 to nothing, Washington. Then with the score, Washington 3 to nothing. Patriots second and eight. Steve Grogan passing to Stan Morgan for the touchdown. New England seven. That's Morgan number 86 to three. Washington took a 9-7 lead. And Grogan went to work again. Down the middle of Harold Jackson, the recent acquisition from Los Angeles. Jackson joins in for the touchdown. That made it 14 to nine. Then came unexpected disaster for the Patriots. Less than three minutes left, seeking to run out the clock. The handoff to Horace Ivory, formerly of Oklahoma. The ball picked up by a former Patriot, Brad Dusek. And he rambles all the way for a touchdown. And the Washington Redskins pluck an unexpected victory out of midair. 16 to 14 over the powerhouse New England Patriots. Dick Nolan. Remember him, an assistant to Tom Landry. Head coach at San Francisco, former Giant. This in the New Orleans Superdome. Tarkenton's team unexpectedly trailing seven to nothing. Sir Francis hitting Ricky Young. The acquisition from San Diego. Touchdown. That made it seven to seven. But in the second quarter, Archie Manning went to work. Second and five from their own 31. Henry Childs, number 85. 
corrals the pigskin. And this play is good for 52 yards. And so the drive was more than underway because later in that same drive, the handoff goes to Tony Galbraith. He cuts back. Watch him hit pay dirt. And that makes it 21 to 10 because the Saints had taken a 14 to 10 lead. Trying to strike back. The Vikes trailing 24 to 17. Third and six at the Saints 11. And Tarkenton goes to the left to 85 Sammy White. It's off White's hands. Free safety 37. Tommy Myers picks it off. Look at Tommy Myers. One of the boys from Syracuse. 97 yards. Touchdown. Myers second of three interceptions for the day. So the Saints went on to win. Upset. 31-24. Riverfront Stadium, Kansas City, a heavy underdog to Cincinnati. Cincinnati without Kenny Anderson. The Chiefs up 7-0, 4th and 17. Zanon Andrusician trying to punt. The ball loose. The ball is taken by number 84, Don Bass. That made it 7-6. The extra point failed, but the Bengals were back in the game. Now, in the second quarter, the very next series of play. There's Ted McKnight going through a big hole off tackle, cutting back down the middle. Touchdown, Kansas City, 14-6 under their new coach, Marvin Levy. In the third quarter with Kansas City leading 17-9. Looking at Arnold Margato go in. That made it 24-9. Using the old wing tee of Davey Nelson. The Chiefs ripping the Bengals apart in the fourth quarter with the score 24 to 9. Bengals third and six from the Kansas City 26. Johnny Reeves dropping back, hitting Archie Griffin. There goes the little All-America Heisman Trophy winner two times from Ohio State. And 26-yard score. So it became suddenly 24 to 16. Now this, Zanon Andrew Sishin again finds his kick block having a hard time he had come down from Canada the ball picked up by Scott Perry and he goes all the way in so it became 24 to 23 and that's the way it stayed as under the wing T Kansas City had 69 carries Shea Stadium New York City a kid from Alabama in the wake of Joe Namath named Richard Todd Bob Greasy on the sideline, torn ligaments, the knee in a cast. Don Strzok quarterbacking and being sacked there by Joe Klecko of Temple, a wild one. There's the handoff. Watch this play. Sacked again. Joe Klecko, a critical figure in the game. But that was Gary Davis he manhandled that time. Now Richard Todd, only three minutes, 31 seconds into the game. Look at that pass, deep downfield, to a flyer from California, number 85, Wesley Walker. The ball perfectly thrown, the Jets leading 7 to nothing unexpectedly. Well then, with the score 13 to nothing, Jets, Delvin Williams, the man let go because of the acquisition of O.J. Simpson by San Francisco, shows why he's a member of the Thousand Yard Club. Watch this cut, away and away from that tackler, and he goes in all. 56 yards for the score. That made it 13 to 6. The extra point fell in the third quarter. The score, Jets 20 to 6 over Miami. Back goes Todd. Deep downfield again. And look at the flyer all alone. Wesley Walker, a destined superstar. And so the Jets rolled over the greasy Les Dolphins 33 to 20. That was yesterday. What you're looking at today, right now, live in Texas Stadium, is the championship ring of Two Tall Jones. It is a size 19. It's about seven sizes too big for the young man wearing it, but it's too small for Two Tall Jones. Can you believe that? I yeah. do believe it. I Ladies and gentlemen, it's a privilege to have Kunta Kinte back. LaVar Burton, the brilliant young actor who starred in Roots, which comes back beginning tomorrow night tomorrow. for five nights, Absolutely. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and, and Sunday. Sunday.
You okay. got it, Howard. <laughs> LeVar, do you think the show will take hold again the way it did the first time around? Absolutely, Howard. You know, I've been all over the country this past year and a half. People tell me time and time again, I missed one episode, I missed two episodes, and they're really, they're waiting for it to come back on. I can't believe it. Mm -hmm. But, it, of course, it makes me awfully happy, you know. It was the biggest thing that's ever happened to me, besides birth, I suppose, and, and uh, I'm looking for really good ratings. ABC is, too. What's it done for your career, the impact of you, your performance? It's really, it's changed my life in every way, shape, and form. Um, before, as you know, I was a student studying drama at USC, and now every day I live is different. Uh, no two days are alike. I travel a lot. I meet hundreds and hundreds of people each week, and it's, it's just done tremendous things for me, professionally as well as personally. Now, I'm told we have to go back. I just want the folks to know, He's learned baseball. He plays Ron LaFleur in a forthcoming movie, and he does it very well indeed. A great base runner, leading the American League in That's stolen. Funny. That's my man, Ron LaFleur. we got to go back to football with Frank Gifford. Thank you, LaVar. Halftime, winding down. The score, Dallas 21, Baltimore nothing. ABC's NFL Monday Night Football is being brought to you by Dotson. We are driven to give you a year-end deal on the greatest economy of all, Dotson quality. We'll be ready for the second half kickoff after word from our local station. So stay with us when we return to a sellout crowd at Texas Stadium in Irving. Kirkland, the quarterback, playing in his first NFL regular season game, replacing the injured Bird Jones for Baltimore, having a rough night. Roger Staubach having a good night after a slow start. There's Gil Brandt, the man that acquires the talent for the Dallas Cowboys. More bad news for Baltimore as they get set to receive the kickoff from Dallas. George Coons, their all-pro right tackle, has a reoccurring back injury. He may not see action in the second half. The number one linebacker, their best linebacker perhaps, number 53, Stan White, has a sprained knee. He may not see action. New NFL opening season crowd record set by tonight's attendance of the 14 games, over 823,000 fans turned out to see the games in person, breaking last year's record of a little over 808,000. And over 65,000 here at Texas Stadium tonight, a late sellout. Uh, watching the Dallas Cowboys off to a slow start, and then they really exploded. Dennison scored from one yard out. That followed a 49-yard pass. Tony Hill from Roger Staubach, and then Dorsett with the icing on it with a 91-yard touchdown. Staubach to Dorsett. Joe Washington, recently acquired from San Diego, the former Oklahoma All-American, slithers out over the 25-yard line to the 26. And we are anticipating for Baltimore, Mike Kirkland, a quarterback, 15, because that's just about it. Bill Troop, the backup behind Burt Jones, was injured also last week. The setback, Don McCauley, 23. Roosevelt leaks 48. The wide receivers, 35. Dowdy. Roger Carr, 81. The tight end, Mac Alston. Van Dyne, number 67, replaces the injured right tackle George Coons for Baltimore. First and 10, Baltimore, their first possession. Here in the second half, they're down 21 points. The ball just inside the 27-yard line. Ron Lee gets the call over the left side, and Lee upended right at the line of scrimmage. And here's the man we watched Howard in a game, though, not so long ago, and he put on quite a show. We were kind of curious why he wasn't in there at the beginning. That's right. We saw him against Houston two years ago. He broke one for long yardage. He's a fullback type who is running out of a halfback position, has enormous speed, can turn the corners, great power. He does, as you have noted, toss the ball up, perhaps much too occasionally. But I like to see him in there. Big man, 6'4", 235, second down and 10. Kirkland puts both backs out of the backfield. Firing over the middle, incomplete, in and out of the hands of Roosevelt. Leaps into his D.D. Lewis. On the coverage, Tom Henderson on the pressure. I think that, uh, I really think that was just a defensive play. Ball was pretty well thrown, Frank. Was that uh, D.D. that knocked him? I thought it was Henderson that was right there on him. It was Henderson. And uh, he just, again, you see, he utilized that speed that he has. Two first downs. Son of a gun. Minus seven yards pass. Third down, ten. Dowdy goes right. Carr goes left. Marshall Johnson, number 80. Now it is a setback. That's it. Kirkland fires complete. Ron Lee has the first down out around the 41-yard line. Ron Lee, last year, over 340 yards rushing. Backing up Lydell Mitchell and Roosevelt Leakes. 
Baltimore also has a young man they acquired recently, Don Hardiman. Played a lot of football with Houston, went to Tampa. The shot last year in a trade for Anthony Davis, and Baltimore acquired him earlier in the season. He has not seen action tonight. First and ten. Look at that. Roosevelt Meeks. That's Brinnig over there from that middle linebacker. He picked up two or three yards, but he's still there in the hole. You know, you touched on it earlier, Don, and the middle linebacker is always the key to Tom's defense. Jethro Pugh, Randy White, they get a lot of acclaim and all that, but one of their jobs is to make sure no one gets to this man, number 53, Bob Bruning. He reads his keys, steps in, filling either right across the line of scrimmage from tackle to tackle. It's really true. Tom really has felt that way since the New York player coach days when he had Sam Huff there in the middle. That was his whole game. Second and seven. 44-yard line of Baltimore. Well, somebody missed something. Flags it down. The ball may have been snapped a little early. Tom used to drive in from Stanford, Connecticut every morning to the Yankee Stadium. That's when he was devising the 4-3 defense that became the staple defense of professional football. And the whole scheme was to have Rodas Deli, Graham, Macheleski, and Cat Cabbage hit to the outside, thus freeing to, uh, Sam Huff. And that made Huff... Yes. A star. Illegal motion. Right guard declined. Third down. Isn't that amazing what freeway traffic will do to your mind? <laughs> Actually, it all began against Cleveland many years ago, about 1950-51. That's at the seven. They couldn't contain them, so they started dropping the ends off, and that evolved to 4-3. Illegal motion. Third down. Oh, get rid of it. Now then, come on out. On lead. Back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. He is buried. Cliff Harris is up and Randy White is over. I talk about it only because, as you know, Gip, I was in that car every morning. Driving in with Landry and the big R, Robustella. It just verified what I said. <laughs> I think there's some conversation in that car. Yeah, can you imagine? It looked like that plane was going to pick up a lot of yardage, but that was that pursuit from the inside. That thing was open there for a while. David Lee will punt on fourth down deep is Butch Johnson standing back at his 20-yard line. Butch Johnson at his own 27. And Johnson tacks on a few more. After the 42-yard line, Dallas is in good field position. And things will pick up dramatically now if Dallas continues where they left off in the first half. We'll be back in just a moment. 12-28, remaining in the third quarter. Frank Gifford, along with Howard Cosell, Don Meredith. Our first NFL Monday night season of uh, season we feel is the best we've ever had. One of the Dallas Cowgirls and Baltimore has further troubles as Dallas has a first and ten. Their own 43-yard line. Their regular cornerback, Norm Thompson, we talked about him in the first quarter, will not be back for the rest of the game. Stan White will not be back, nor will George Coons, and this is Newhouse. And the whirling one whirls out to the 47-yard line, a gain of six yards. It'll be second and four. And as you watch this Baltimore team, which is but a shell of the team that has won three division championships consecutively, think of this. Next week, Miami, and nobody brings a team back better than Don Shula. And after that, New England, a powerhouse team, despite its loss to Washington. That'll be a Monday night game. Of course, so Dallas will be tested by the Giants. Yes, indeed. Next Sunday. Mm -hmm. One second down. <laughs> New out. Gets the first down, a little extra effort. He's down around the 47-yard line. And little Robert is having quite a night. He is having a good night. I don't think you're going to see Dallas throw very much now, uh, except in those very obvious passing situations, because as uh, I think some of us mentioned earlier in the game, the one thing that he felt, Tom felt, has been a little slow in developing this preseason has been they're running, but it hadn't really been that bad. So I imagine they'll work on that for a little while, don't you? <laughs> Roberts averaging 4.5 yards per carry. Dorsett is all world. Oh, is he indeed? Here he is. Here's all world. Uh oh. <laughs> well, what he better he he must it made me start giving this ball to different folks. <laughs> First and ten. Dorsett. Slithers off the left side, where Pat Donovan's doing a good job against Dutton. He has 95 yards now on the ground, a whole bunch catching the football. You got a little trivia. You know, Darcy's all his quickness and speed, but they have an agility drill that they set up out in training camp where a player runs through a bunch of tires and comes back and so forth. The guy that wins that is not Dorsett. It's a guy named Scott Laidlaw. 
Thought you might like that. He's a backup man behind Robert Newhouse. Agility. Dorset just under 200 yards on the night in offense. 99 receiving, 94 rushing on first and 10. Newhouse gets a shot. Uh, flag goes down. I think we're going to have a clip against Dallas. That's Pearson coming in there. That's one of those questions, one of those uh, new rules they threw in a couple of years ago, which I think is good. They're trying to eliminate that crackback block. But isn't there a, still a time or a, 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 what am I trying to say, a, a space there where you can still get that crackback? Tackle to tackle. There you go. See there, Frank? He was outside the tackle. Tony Hill cracked back against the Baltimore safety, number 40, Bruce Laird. Uh, I apologize for getting in the rules. I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought you were great. No, I'm not. I just somehow get tongue-tied about them. I just, that's what I said. What it would appear from the crack there. Personal foul. Clipping. Number 88. Yeah. Offense. Preston Pearson. Yeah. So Pearson. Pearson, rather. Still first down. Well, here you look at it, John. He probably didn't mean to, but it, it was actually a fairly good force that time by Bruce Laird. He let him get a little bit deep, but that wasn't in between the tackles. Well, that was a close call, too. First down, 18. Ball at the 48-yard line of Baltimore. Roger. Wow. The next with Drew Pearson. This time, Drew had hands problem. In the first half, holds on out of the 36-yard line. Just 12 of those yards back. Second down at 18. Thus far, they started slowly. Baltimore had a couple of early breaks. They could have got on the scoreboard. They couldn't capitalize. And it's been Dallas ever since midway in the first quarter. As Tony Dorsett rolls back to the original line of scrimmage, maybe a yard, yard and a half short, it'll be third down and 12. Well, this could be a propitious moment to talk about next week's game as Dallas appears on the verge of collecting some more. Denver against Minnesota at Bloomington, Minnesota. Denver with a staunch, a stellar defense that created the opportunities for the Broncos to beat Oakland in an opening game yesterday that was critically important despite the early stage of the season. But against Sir Francis, who can scramble, the defense may be hard foot. We'll see next Monday night. Out of the shotgun, and Staubach let too much time go. I believe the be a delay of game. Now we got an illegal procedure call and the clock had run out. Well, if they don't make it, it'll be an opportunity to see if we were right on that first well, field goal sorry. attempt Number by Rob Offense. They had him too close. He'll Still get one now where he can back up a little bit, get a better look at it. You can't get too close to see things. Like <laughs> too close to the forest to see the trees, things like that. You know what I mean? Sure. Third down and 18. Andy Frederick, guilty of a false start. Right tackle for the Dallas Cowboys. Again, out of the shotgun. Baltimore trying the blitz. Whoa. Dallas picks it up, and Drew Pearson should pick up six. All right. Now oh, that's pretty. 38 yard touchdown. Wow. Rogers, second of the night. As yeah. I said, they're on the verge of collecting some more. Boy, if you blitz, you end up in man-to-man -man coverage. Yeah. Dwight Harrison replacing Norm Thompson is trying to stay with maybe the best wide receiver in football. Drew Pearson, he didn't do it. I think that was a, a block by Dorsey, too. That might have been on Barnes, but that ball was also extremely well thrown. Pearson, as you mentioned, Frank, does have a man-to-man, the old down-and-in or post pattern, and that ball's right there. Don't break stride, just keep going. And that was uh, Dwight Harrison covering him. Dallas can't help themselves. They continue to pile it up. Raphael sets you on for the conversion. Good. So Dallas with 8.43 remaining in the third quarter. Extends their lead to 28 to nothing over Baltimore. We'll be back in Texas in a moment. Dallas continues to roll. The number one ranked offensive team last year in the entire NFL. 
picking up where they left off. Not many changes. Alf Neal is retired. They're getting good work out of Andy Frederick in that spot. They lead 28 to nothing. Staubach, 38-yard touchdown pass to Drew Pearson. Incidentally, put Drew Pearson over the 4,000-yard career mark. Marshall Johnson from the three-yard line. Flag is down, and Johnson's down at the 30. And while we wait to see what the flag is all about, we'll pause five seconds and allow our local stations all along the line to identify themselves to you. Obviously being assessed against Baltimore. Holding during the run back, number 71. First down. Holding by Mike Ozdowski of Baltimore. First and ten for Baltimore. They'll try and get on the scoreboard. Not going to be easy. They've had difficulty moving the ball at all, all evening. First and 10 from their own 16. Setbacks round lead 34. 48 goals about leaks. Play action fake. Kirkland gets it off to Dowdy on the flanker screen. Benny Barnes corrals Dowdy at the 25-yard line. Short of the first down by about a yard. He threw that one under a big two tall arms, didn't he? Well, you can see how Marsha Broda feels. He was just kidding himself. Not the fans of Baltimore, not us. At the very beginning of the telecast, Bert Jones right next to him must be thinking, at the very least, I could have moved the ball club and it would have been a representative game. But it's not. It's the anticipated route that we spoke of again and again in the first half. You know, Howard, he did get a break yesterday with New England going down and Miami going down. As, let's face it, he's going to have to get Bert Jones back in action. And he's still is going to miss Lydell Mitchell the handoff Ron Lee close to the first down I don't really think you know I'm not it'd be hard for Burt Jones or anybody else to do too much more than that they've got some other holes in there too Burt I guess is their accepted quarterback and maybe a psychological letdown but I haven't seen many places that anybody could do much more he just uh, well, you know what I mean. You just, what do you mean? Well, I don't think anybody's going to do much against him right here. Now, Baltimore's got to plug up some more holes. Burt's a heck of a nice guy. and can throw well. Not left-handed, and that right one's the one that's hurt. So he'll have to get it fixed. They got the first down. Kirkland. There it is, right on the money. Firing into the hands of number 81, Roger Carr. Complete his first reception of the night. That's the key point, Frank. His first reception of the night. I think he's physically well now. He had had a knee, and he had had knee surgery in Cotton Valley, as you watch Roger Carr. Cotton Valley isn't the place where you normally have knee surgery. You normally go to one of the great city hospitals and go to the great orthopedic surgeons, but not in this case. So now, four, four, first and ten. Ron Lee, right side, gets a couple of his second and eight, get there, and upended by Charlie Waters. I have nothing against surgery in Cotton Valley, which is where Roger lives, but in point of fact, his recovery was rather delayed. Second down, Lee. Well, he injured that knee last year. Yeah. Suffered through, really, a tough season, at least for Roger Carr. Don mentioned he had a great year in 76. He did. 43 receptions, 11 touchdowns. He's a great player. Second down and eight. Kirkland goes for Carr and hits Aaron Kyle beautifully. Aaron, he just ran a better route. I tell you, Aaron Kyle, uh-oh, we got somebody is having some problems. D.D. Lewis and Ron Lee seem to be going at it. They got an official there in the middle of it. Well, they are indicating that Ron Lee leave the field. In Paris, that Lee was ordered off the field. That was Tunney in the middle of him there. Isn't it? Jim Tunney hopped right well, in Well, I'll tell you this, it was not Arthur McCann. <laughs> but, no, was that in any way meant as a promotion for September 15th when you'll be seeing Ali against Spinks on ABC? Certainly it was not. 
Although who knows? Let's see what happened here. All Look right, that. that. Didi came in from his outside. That he missed the first shot. And uh, he just hold this stuff off. Didi will take a wick at you. I'll tell you. Didi did take the first way. Do you see that right get in there? I see how Tony got in too. He couldn't get out of it. <laughs> I'd say that's not too smart to have a fight right there. It probably wasn't an official in the middle of it. First and ten, Dallas. Football, their own 29-yard line. They lead 28 to nothing. Interesting that Lee led with a right. Why? Because that's a dangerous blow against an orthodox fighter. It takes longer for the punch to reach the head of the other fighter who can respond with an answering left and get in... Well, now I understand. <laughs> All right. Look at that. I don't think I'll go this way. He versus the field, having collided with his guard, pulling guard, Herbert Scott, number 68. Loses a yard, a yard and a half, and another Baltimore Colt is down. Oh, that's too bad. That's Doug Nettles over there. They are, really are getting themselves beat up, aren't they? They really are. Just to finish your lesson in boxing, the right lead. <laughs> It was popularized by Muhammad Ali in his prime. And he got away with it because of his tremendous speed. Now many young fighters like to use it, like Sugar Ray Leonard. We'll be right back. Duck Nettles, the shaken up Baltimore Colt, has left the field under his own power, appeared to just have the wind knocked from him. They've also been informed that D.D. Lewis of the Cowboys and Ron Lee of the Colts have both been ejected from the game for fighting. Second down and 12 for Dallas. Ball on their own 27-yard line. Saw that. Dumps it to Dorsett. And oh. Dorsett is on his way again. Sanders Shriver had a shot at him for a loss, and Dorsett just shook him off like he wasn't even there. He almost looked like he just mis-aimed at him. He aimed where he thought he would be, and maybe most folks would have, but Tony can just accelerate so quickly, he was behind him. Well, he wasn't even looking at Shriver, and he gave him a move, and Shriver missed. And another player is down. This time it's a cowboy. Uh-oh. That's Burton Lawless. Dorsett short of the first down by about three, four yards. The last graphic we showed, I think, expresses the total dominance by Dallas. The last four times they've had the ball, they've scored four touchdowns. 28 to nothing. And Dorsett putting on quite a show for national television. 107 yards receiving, 96 yards rushing on eight receptions. 5-11 remaining in the third quarter. It's all Dallas thus far, and we'll be returning to Texas right after this. Burton Lawless, left guard and messenger man for Tom Landry tonight is all right like nettles a moment ago doug nettles of baltimore apparently just had the wind knocked from him and roger Staubach drops into the shotgun third down of three the ball at the 35 yard line and preston pearson as he always does is in there on the passing situation he's number 26. there he is oh what a move what a move Whoop, whoops lost something found it at the 46 for dallas first down now, Don, you know what Pearson's in there for. He yeah. ain't called it in advance. Why isn't there better coverage of it? Well, they got so many others that can do the same thing, but he just happens to be the one that's been open as long as designed there. It's awfully hard to cover. They're just, Roger, again, had good protection, so you start right there. Pearson's got that instinctive, or just had the instincts to know where these people are, and he, uh, he does have a way of getting open. I don't, uh, we were talking here while on the commercial. Danny White played some in the uh, preseason. If Dallas has a weakness, I think it's the possibility that Roger Staubach could get hurt this year. So they should be playing Danny. Well, I'm not saying they should. I'm just saying when you look at their strengths, we've talked about, you know, that it's pretty hard to find weaknesses. Roger is 36 years old, and he is in good shape and all that sort of jazz, and that he's having a good night. They want him to play a lot in preseason because the preseason was shorter. Danny White, I think... Uh, could be a real key to the overall success of the season, along with a uh, second year, uh, Glenn Carano, another quarterback. Out of, uh, They're high on him, yeah. too. Oh, Very well. But you make a good point. I think we'll see White. If Dallas starts again. Illegal procedure. First down and 15. Dorsett 
Oh, watch oh out. my gosh, how can he do that? How oh, does he know? He could do it. How does he know? Doug Nettles will try and catch him. He got him. And he does, but not until Dorsett rambles all the way down to the eight-yard line. And you're looking at a very special football player. You really are. There's no question about that. Everything he did at the intercollegiate level, he is proving he can do at the professional level. But you go against the grain right here. That's it, Frank. It's not designed there. And he just, that's just, that's, from there on, it's Tony Dorsett. Now, the, the, from about that first five or six yards, it was a whole team thing. Want to have a guy like this on your side just really makes all the difference. Keep him healthy. Johnny Majors, if you're watching tonight, what you have wrought with that young man. He wrought a whole lot for Johnny Majors. Yeah, he, he sure, sure did. did. 51 yard pickup, and he continues to pile up the statistics. They're almost incredible at this point. First and goal, the one of the eight yard line. He's got 254 yards of offense as we look at Doug Dennison getting Dorsett a little bit of relief. 147 yards rushing on 15 attempts. God. Three receptions, 107 yards, one touchdown. This little man. And a partridge in a pear tree. <laughs> That's not bad. He could produce that before the night's over. Second and goal, the ball at the two-yard line. Well, you may not like the score if you're still with us, but we hope you are. But you're watching some Rather incredible individual performances tonight, mainly by number 33, Tony Dorsett. Dennison. Battles over the right side. Mike Barnes, with a lot of help from his friends, puts the brakes on as Dennison gets to the one. It'll be third and goal. 16 game season. Let's assume the average is 150 yards per game. All right. That's 2,400 yards or thereabouts. Right? Uh, yeah, that's somewhere close. I'll take your word for it. What does he do? Get a record with an asterisk next to his name, a la Roger Maris? No, no. They've already settled that. They've said that, you know, it's what, whatever goes, it, it goes. And Jim Brown did his in 12 game seasons. The three setbacks are in there. Alois Blackwell, a rookie from Houston, is in there. Gets the call. No, Roger hit the ball and dumps it off. Oh, that's oh. nice. Jay Saldi, the tight end. Bob back. 50 piece of work, put it into Aloys Blackwell, pull it out. Solly, all alone in the end zone. Donald's touchdown. That was nice. Well executed. Again, very difficult to defend against. A lot of pressure on that defense. Good fake by Rogers. Slight roll. He could have walked that one in. Being a good quarterback that he is, let's get another. About all that's left to this game, Don, is to see if we have the most lopsided score in the history of Monday Night Football. Septian helps out that effort. Yes, sir. Adding one more, the Cowboys lead 35 to nothing. We're getting close. There was a night down here in Texas when the Cowboys played St. Louis. The Cowboys had been favored. St. Louis won it 38 to nothing. I still don't believe that. It was a memorable night because of the discomfiture in the booth of Mr. Merritt. Uh -huh. But now there is only pride in his former teammates as it's clear the prestige, the tradition he left behind him has finally been captured by the current team. They've really done a lot with what I left them, didn't they? These guys just took off and did a good job. They still haven't finished this stadium. Look at that. The Cowgirls performing. And they have set off a trend in the National Football League that has swept around the entire league. Only a few teams don't have cheerleaders anymore. A little, little sex and violence. Boy, you sell it. Lefty on to kick off. Mr. Meredith with a punch in comment. I didn't say that, did I? Yes, you did. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. Marshall Johnson at the seven-yard line. Johnson has had some nifty returns, gets out to the 31-yard line once again. Marshall Johnson, third year back, played his college football over in Houston. So Don McCauley comes in along with Roosevelt Leakes, and Mike Kirkland remains the quarterback. Ron Lee, of course, number 34, ejected from the game, as was D.D. Lewis of the Cowboys. 2.40 remaining in the third quarter. 
Guy Brown now number 59 in defensively in place of D.D. Lewis for Dallas. Roosevelt leaks. That leaks out of the 35 to the 36 yard line. Again, five. It'll be second and five. And Danny White, the backup quarterback, is warming up with the sidelines for Dallas. Which, of course, is exactly the thing to do. Tom Landry knew it long before we did. He's going to protect Roger the Dodger. I think he knows what he's doing. Al McCauley had a pretty good block that time on uh, uh, Henderson, little Thomas Henderson. He laid him back. Picked up about a five yard one. Mike Kirkland. What a baptism tonight. His first pro football game. Hands off to McCauley. McCauley finds a big hole. Gets the first down and goes out to the 46 yard line. Now, this game has to hurt the people of Baltimore very much. Through the long years of contemporary professional football history, except for a year or two here and there, the Colts have symbolized football excellence. The great teams of Wee Bubeck. The victory in the sudden death game over Frank's Giants. The victory the following year. The victory in the Super Bowl in 71. The last three years. And suddenly to come upon this, it has to hurt. First and ten for Baltimore. Kirkland. Oh, and open. And Roger Carr, and he doesn't hold on. Incomplete. That was not, it's not going out, working out well for Kirkland when he does perform. That ball was well thrown. Aaron Kyle was a defensive back in there. Again, you talk, you know, there's Cliff Harris. Aaron Kyle is one of the really best athletes that Dallas has ever drafted, according to their draft system. And he's playing in there right now. Interesting that you say that, because there you see Aaron Kyle doing what he does best. When Gil Brandt drafted Aaron Kyle, number one, there was much behind-the-scenes criticism of him around the league. But few, if any, defensive backs hit harder than Aaron Kyle. His coverage may not be the best, but he hits. Trivia, Starback has tied his own club record, 11 straight completions. Four of the last nine have been for touchdowns. For Baltimore, this is McCauley. Line of scrimmage a little more. It'll be second down and nine. Or the third down and nine. Mike Kirkland going all the way. We anticipated that. Bill Troop was also injured in last week's game where Burt Jones had the incomplete separation of his right shoulder. He Bill Troop has a bruised shoulder. Could hand off, possibly, if he were needed. But it's Mike Kirkland all the way for Baltimore. Third and ten, and another ball. McCauley drops it again. Yeah, Mike said, wait a minute, guys. I'm just now getting warmed up. Oh, give me a little help. H-E-P, help. Fourth down, and David Lee will trot out. Mike Kirkland is wondering what he has to do. Once again, the statistics are self-revealing. David Lee will punt deep for Dallas at his 12-yard line, Butch Johnson. Johnson will get an opportunity. Lee off the side of his foot. He wanted to go out of bounds and didn't get it. Johnson back out to the 33-yard line. Corral there by Daryl Luce. Twenty-four seconds remaining in the third quarter. Lopsided game, yes. Great individual performances, no question about it. Tony Dorsett putting on quite a show as Roger Starback retires for the evening. Out comes Danny White, originally drafted back in 74, third round pick out of Arizona State. Played for Memphis in the WFL. Dorsett sits down, he'll get a rest. <laughs> he should be exhausted just from running tonight. There it is. 254 yards of offense. Golden Richards is in, wide receiver, number 83. 86, Butch Johnson is in wide receiver for Dallas. This is Dennison, right side. That's, and they have got the horses. They didn't slow down a lot back there. We got Scott Laidlaw at fullback, and Frank, I see the Rayfield Wrights in attack. Rayfield Wright, of course, trying to come back from knee surgery over a year ago. Seconds ticking away. And that is the end of the third quarter as we look at the blocking over the right side. That's big Rayfield, number 70. You see blocking on Cook. 
You're watching another exclusive of ABC Sports. That is the end of the third quarter with the score. Dallas 35, Baltimore nothing. We'll be back with the fourth quarter in just a moment. For Dallas 35, Scott Laidlaw. He's a Stanford boy. Doug Dennison from Touchdown State is in there 21. Wide receivers are Richardson, Butch Johnson, the other one, number 86, Richardson, 83. And, of course, the quarterback, number 11, Danny White. And off, Scott Laidlaw. Laidlaw squeezes out the first down, out to about the 49-yard line. We've got some baseball scores. Quickly, let's look at them. That game doesn't matter to the pennant race. That does. The Yanks won the first of two, nine to one, lost the second five to four. But, all right, Seattle beat Milwaukee in the first. Milwaukee beat Seattle in the second. Boston lost to Baltimore, so the Yankees now trail the Red Sox by five games. They meet the three games later in the week in Fenway Park. So that's becoming a pennant race. Cleveland Toronto game of no import. First and ten. The ball at the 44 yard line of Dallas. White inside handoff. Doug Dennison. Turns the right side and gets out to the 46 yard line. A gain of two. It'll be second down and eight. That fellow's a squirmer, the man from Cutsdown State. You get in close, you notice. Landry goes to Dennison to put the ball across. The free agent came up 75. Had a big year in 76 when a lot of injuries hit the Dallas second uh, offensive backs. He had 540 yards that year. Second and eight. There he goes again. Dennison. Very close to a first down after the 46 yard line. Sanders Schreiber. Made the initial hit for Baltimore. If you're wondering about the National League pennant races, quickly, let's get you abreast on those. Bucks won the first of two, seven to four over the Mets. Bucks won the second, seven to nothing over the Mets. Bucks have gone crazy. Cards beat the Phils in the first of two, but the Phils beat the Cards in the second. The Phils now lead the Bucks by only one game. Montreal beat Chicago in the first of two. Montreal made it a twin victory. That deepens Chicago's troubles as we go past the Crossroads Day Labor Day. Cincinnati over Houston in the ninth. And right there, you see a very, very big one. That's a final. The Dodgers beat the Giants 5-4. to four. And so, Danny White carries it himself for the Dallas first down. So for you baseball fans who are also football fans, the Dodgers lead the Giants by two. Multiple changes. As we mentioned, Dallas will play the Giants next week. They play, of course, all the members of their Eastern Division of the NFC twice. They'll also play Los Angeles as slow stick'em stuff. That old gooey, gooey explain the shot. That's the stick'em they wear. Yeah. Doubt he wears a lot of it. I'll give you the rest of that Dallas schedule in a moment. First and ten. Ball of Baltimore is 45. Dennison getting a workout tonight. It's to the 41, gain of four. It'll be second down and six. And they also play the Rams. They play them in two weeks. They'll play Miami on Thursday, October the 26th. We'll be here for that one. They, or rather, put Minnesota for that one. They play Miami, Green Bay, New Orleans, New England, and the Jets. Uh -huh. The Ring of Fame, I think they call it, don't they, Don? There's four Cowboys up there. Don Perkins, Bob Lilly, Chuck Howley, and... Down and south. Ring of Honor. That's it. Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor. Yeah, you fall into it. That is nice. Second and six. Screen with the flanker. Golden Richards. Rayfield right in front of it. Didn't get the block. And Daryl Luce in there to make the stop. Number 58 for Baltimore. There's that ring we were speaking of a moment ago. Oh, how many key interceptions Chuck Howley made. Yeah. And how about that guy right there? Lily, he was a team by himself. There's my man. They call him a legend. What was his quote? Who? Lily? Yeah. I don't I don't know. Perkins was a perk, can you go? And he's a like, uh-huh. The quote that applied to Lily was really the quote of the opposition. I can't get started with you. <laughs> oh, boy. Third down, a long three. The ball just inside the 40-yard line. Laid law. He can run off of this. This is Preston Pearson. And look at that interference out there. Oops. Flag is down. 
Pearson is down at the 30, has the first down, but a flag is down. Looks like Herbert Scott slow getting up, too. Frank, that was, I think the call will be against Herbert Scott. They call it off. Those were tough days, Don, when you started out with these Cowboys. It's oh, it's great, you know, to swap those old lies now, Frank, because it does get tougher and, uh, you know, as the time goes on. But it really was fun, too. I think to be a part of, uh, of the whole organization from the beginning was a lot of fun. Was, uh, we had some real characters down here. Holding, and we are having a little bit of a problem with Tim Tunney's radio mic. May have gone out since he turned boxing referee. Mm -hmm. Cowboys back up to Baltimore's 49-yard line. First third down and nine. Up goes Richardson. Right Butch Johnson. Anyway, drops into the shotgun. Screen again to Pearson. Got out there with just one step, one step behind him, couldn't quite make it. First down, Dallas. That's amazing, isn't it? Just keep rolling right along. Yeah, there's a, there's a, I'd like to draw to that pair, wouldn't you? Yeah, that's not bad, is it? <laughs> Don was making a point about Ermel Allen as we look at this in replay. A little quick screen pass. Howard is just a flip out again to. Pearson there, and that's the guy you've been talking about with his elusive moves, and he does have them, kind of glides along. As the statistics man, by the way, Preston Pearson started with Baltimore. That's right. Then he was traded to Pittsburgh, and then he became the lone, at that time, non-homegrown member of the Cowboys. First and ten. Ball goes to Dennison. Didn't quite make it. They're all loose in there on the stop for Baltimore. Actually, Preston Pearson led the league in kickoff returns when he came up with Baltimore. Yeah, you know, they, Dallas was trying to hide a quarterback. It's either Jim Zorn or Steve DeBerg. I forget which one it was. And they came down the last cup. They got an offensive back hurt. Bork. It was Steve DeBerg. DeBerg. That's he was right. now out at San Francisco. They really wanted to keep it. They felt that they had to take a chance. Maybe no one would pick DeBerg up. And they kept, they got Pearson, and DeBerg is now starting quarterback at San Francisco. It all works out. Yeah. It doesn't it up to. Second and ten. Dennison on the draw. Big hole and look at him move. Another first down. Or very close to a first down at the 25-yard line. You know, you mentioned DeBerg. He looked excellent in a preseason game in Denver a week ago Friday night. Very impressive. <laughs> After that performance, they dropped Plunkett. Excuse me, but let's face it, preseason games mean absolutely nothing. I think they may have had a little more importance when they don't have as many of them, but I think uh, as far as the result of whether you win or lose, it's not that, quite that important, but it really is great training ground to see what you guys can do. Third down, Dennison just short of the first down. Laidlaw gets the call, and, oh, and he has upset the ball. Bobbles loose, but quickly recovered there. That one was read fairly well, wasn't it? No close to go. Sure was. Oh, closed in there, loose, filling in behind Fred Cook and Mike Barnes. And so Dallas will try to Raphael Septian. Now let's take a look again. Uh-huh. That's Butch Johnson and Bruce Laird had that inside position and he just carried him right in there. That was also Jay Saldi, number 87, trying to block in there, too. They just crushed that in there. Raphael, here's your shot, boy. It was 16 of 18 for the Rams from inside the 40 a year ago. This one will be from 40 yards out. 45, rather. Whoops. He hooked it a little bit left. Plenty of distance. Whatever the distance, Raphael is having trouble tonight. Hi, Tony. You gave us a good show, kid. We'll be right back. Yes, he's had some Tony Dorsett, if you join the play, 254 rides of offense, 107 receiving, 147 rushing. Just a remarkable effort. Roger Staubach left the game 16 of 22, 280 yards, four TDs. Right now, Baltimore has a first and 10, the ball at their own 27. Mike Kirkland dumps it out to the number one draft pick, 
Reese McCall from Auburn. If you look at the Baltimore roster, apparently there are only two rookies on it. Reese McCall of Auburn, the number one draft choice. Mike Woods, linebacker from the University of Cincinnati, number two choice. But in reality, there are six first-year men on that squad because four draft choices of a year ago who were out for the season are now on the roster, including Randy Burke, the wide receiver, who was the number one draft choice of a year ago. McCall got seven to second down and three. Ball at the 34-yard line. This is McCauley. McCauley, short of the first down, out to the 36-yard line. Bob Bruning made the stop. If you want the test of a professional, or of a professional, it's when a man keeps going in the face of a 35 to nothing score. McCauley is a professional. There's no letdown in it. I said something earlier, I'll correct about McCauley. He is a senior, broke O.J. Simpson's single-season rushing record out of North Carolina. 1,720 yards, and they play some pretty heavy football in that conference. Third and one. This is McCauley. Gets the first down. Out around the 38-yard line. Now, make a point, Frank. You were discussing Dallas's schedule early. There's a very, very excellent 78 schedule analysis in a book called The Pro Football Predictor. And it sets forth the relative difficulty of every team's schedule in the league. Dallas does not have a difficult schedule based upon the strength of the opponents from the afterface as the opponents played a year ago. Their difficulty is measured at .491. Baltimore's difficulty of schedule is at .513. On first and ten. Kirkland. This Look out. Goes into the hands of Cliff Harris. Harris immediately drops. Glenn Dowdy, the intended receiver. The ball wobbling, thrown short. And Harris was right there playing center field, perhaps as good as anyone in football today. He's an all-pro, has been through the years. It's safe to say as good as anyone in football today. And so it's still 35 nothing. Dallas will be right back. Samantha Agar. We're back in Irving. Frank Eppert, Howard Cosell, Don Meredith. We hope you're still with us. Lopsided football game. The Cowboys over the Colts 35 nothing. Some really wild play, individual play, on the part of some of the Cowboys tonight. The Colts, of course, trying to play without quarterback Kurt Jones. Their offensive machine, Lydell Mitchell, is gone to San Diego. They've had their problems. Scott Laidlaw for the Cowboys. Over the left side, gets a yard. It'll be second down and nine. Yeah. Hi there. That's what it's like up here. Hi there. Yeah, that's good. Yes, that's good. We're all up here. We're working. We're hmm? working. We're working. I'm at the office. I just noticed that they moved Andy Frederick over to the offensive left tackle when they brought in uh, Rayfield Wright for the old right tackle position, so... They're still giving him a little bit more work, Frederick, as much as they can because he's the newest member of that offensive line. It's a great kind of game for Dallas to open with to be able to use so many players for a lot of reasons, but primarily they didn't. They did have that short preseason that we talked about, so they've been able to play just about as many people as they would have in a regular preseason game. Irma Allen said, frankly, he didn't see a weakness on this Dallas team. Well, we'll pick up with that after Frank calls the play. Second down nine, Irma coming off. On his own power, appears to be all right. Very warm night as Dennison gets the call, gets a couple of yards. It'll be third down and seven. Back in 1972, the Miami Dolphins, with that extraordinary team put together by Don Shula, the so-called no-name defense team, went unbeaten. And many people conjectured at that time, as Miami was building the streak, that it couldn't be done. Then many people said, OK, he pulled a miracle. It'll never be done again. I know this is the first game of the season. I know Baltimore is a team riddled by injuries, departures, and all the rest. But such is the strength of Dallas that we may conjure with the notion again of an unbeaten team. Third and seven. Dallas at their own 28. Danny White drops into the shotgun. Going out. Got it. Over on the left side of Butch Johnson. He has it for the first down. Butch Johnson, along with Golden Richards, will see a lot less action this year because of the play of a sensational second-year man out of Stanford, Tony Hill. And this is a good athlete you're looking at right here. He is a great athlete. 
Now that ball was well thrown too. They said uh, they're trying to check old White out there. And the ball was right on the money. A deep sideline pattern picked up the first down. But you're right about Butch Johnson. He does a lot of things well. It's great to have that athlete that does the kick returns to come in. He's an extra man, and so is that guy. Oh boy, he is something else. Danny White had ten attempts last year. Roger Staubach healthy, going most of the way. To Dennison, and look at Dennison. That's the kind of players they have on the bench. Down to the 35-yard line. First down, Dallas. Herb Orvis acquired from Detroit by Baltimore, number 88, over there to make the stop. That's another thing. As you watch Doug Dennison, and Frank said it all when he said that's the kind of players they got on the bench. Look at him. As a late law, number 35, that actually bounced him out. They traded Raymond Chester. For Mike Siani, who had foot surgery, who had been a decent receiver with Oakland, but to trade Raymond Chester, Freddie Scott was traded to Detroit for Herb Orvis. Freddie Scott's a fine wide receiver out of Amherst, getting his medical degree at Johns Hopkins. Quick down on first and ten, and it goes to Scott Laidlaw. He drives the middle, gets three yards, it'll be second and seven. The Scott trade was far more understandable, Frank, because Herb Orvis is a proven player, a past number one draft choice for Detroit. He was out of favor in Detroit. He was an open recalcitrant, but he shores up the defensive line, gives them adequate reserve strength for Baltimore. So. What, what position is that? <laughs> recalcitrant. <laughs> recalcitrant. Not a bad word. It was a good one. I just wouldn't know if that's weak side or strong side recalcitrant. He was not truculent. He was recalcitrant. Second and six. Wow. Scott Laidlaw. Gets a little exercise and moves down around the 30-yard line. Gain of two. It'll be third down and call it four. A big night nerving here, hasn't it? Scott Laidlaw, another Stanford product. His fourth year. Had a big year, as did Dennison in 74. Well, the 76, 424 yards. <laughs> White on third down, long four. Uh-oh. Oh, and Doug Meadows almost came up with the interception intended for Preston Pearson. It's a nice sign on the scoreboard. Happy anniversary, Marianne and Roger Starbuck. Today is their 13th anniversary, and there is the sun. That's nice. That it is. Nice. She's a nice lady, so is Roger. Well, not if Roger's a nice lady, but they're both very nice people. <laughs> well, yeah. the only thing we've got going for us now is the fact that Don Meredith's record still stands. <laughs> the last losing opening day quarterback for Dallas. 48-yard field goal attempt. Raphael Sepian. I don't believe it's to rub it in, it's to just to test out this young man, see how good he is. They just got him on Wednesday. Well, that's it. All right. Now we got it. That ties the old St. Louis Dallas score at 38 to nothing. So we are approaching the end of a not August evening. We'll be right back. Rafael Septian hits them 48 yards out to make it 38 to nothing. Reminding you again, we will have Denver and Minnesota coming your way next Monday night. Wilmington, Minnesota. Marshall Johnson deep for Baltimore. He's given us a couple of thrills tonight. Takes it in the end zone. He'll bring it up. Yeah, there's another one. Well, I like the way he runs it back. And Marshall Johnson this time out to the 40-yard line. Benny Barnes captain of the special teams. Well, I guess he isn't anymore for Dallas. He's starting left quarterback. Jay Saldy, the captain of the special teams, but that was Vinnie Barnes that corralled Marshall Johnson. Johnson has given Baltimore virtually its only decent field position tonight with his run backs. First and ten. The ball at the 42-yard line. Baltimore still trying to get the goose egg off the scoreboard. McCauley, Roosevelt Leakes remain the setbacks. Randy Burke now comes in as one offensive receiver, but this is Roosevelt Leakes. And the big man who played great football at the University of Texas rolls for seven yards, it'll be second and three. As we approach the two-minute warning in this contest, might be propitious to ruminate about what happened in the NFL yesterday. What with the abundance of injuries, 
We may be seeing a shift in the balance of power in the league. The one game does not a season make and finite judgments cannot be drawn. Right there is the two minute warning. What happened to Minnesota, what happened in all those upsets, leads one to at least conjure with the notion. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Mike Kirkland all the way for Baltimore tonight. Of course, we've told you over and over, Burt Jones out with the shoulder. Bill Troop, his backup is out. So Mike Kirkland, who had never played a moment of NFL regular season football, was the starter tonight. Don Hardiman comes in, set back with 36 for Baltimore. And there was Don McCauley, number 23. This is Hardiman. Yes, sir. He gets the first down. It does appear at the 42-yard line, acquired, as I said earlier, from Tampa. And he came to Tampa trade with Anthony Davis from Houston. Well, this game's not over yet. Hardiman had was a first-round draft choice originally by Houston. He had one 600-yard season, and after that, very little of anything. Tonight, we've seen the second largest total yard story in Dallas history. They have 580. They're 52. Having a ball. First and 10. Baltimore at Dallas' 42-yard line. Kirkland in a peck of trouble. Oh, out of it. It's complete. That'll be 35 yard line. Mike Hurd looking for a ball. He's pretty good. I'm hard of it. It's not over yet. Anything <laughs> <laughs> can happen in the game of football, man. I'm saying, not over the last. By the way, when Dallas got 652 yards. Whoops. A tip out to Marshall Johnson incomplete. What do you say? the clock with 59 seconds remaining in the game. I was about to tell it like it was. Right, well, tell me what it was. When Dallas gained 652 yards, the quarterback was the angular youngster from SMU named Merrick. When, when did that happen? What game was that? I really don't know. It happened, happened against the Eagles. We gained 600. Turn around and blush there. It happened oh, against yeah. the Eagles. Oh, yeah. Who, wait, how much was it? 1966 against the Eagles. I only played three quarters. <laughs> really hot. Second down and ten. Baltimore trying to get the goose egg off the scoreboard. He's got a man wide open. Wide right open. It's yes, a big tight end. This game, there it goes. Ace McCall. You said anything can happen. Oh, he fumbled. It's covered by Dallas. Touchback. Didn't score oh, after all. No. I don't believe it. Anything can happen. Yes, sir. For yes, sir. Mike Franklin. In the carriage of that young man, Mike Kirk. That is right. Reese McCall, the number one draft pick out of Auburn, put on a good show, got open, got to the goal line. But it takes lost it just before he crossed into the end zone, or it would have been the touchdown. Let's takes, watch again. Takes a while for these young guys to catch on to everything. He's got part of it down. You catch it, you run over that line, but the rest of it is. Is that Mike Hagman that came in there? Who was it? Mike Hagman. Yes, sir. I'll tell you, that's really close because all he has to do is break that plane of the goal line. It's six. <laughs> well, he was hit first by 57. Oh. Out there and he didn't help him a bit. And here's a guy, Bruce, Bruce Hunter, we haven't even talked about. Another linebacker. And again, he's a good one. 47 seconds remaining. Uh, quick handoff. Scott Laidlaw. It's a couple of yards up the middle. Again, reminding you that next Monday night, the Denver Broncos, winners over Oakland yesterday, go against the Minnesota Vikings. Minnesota getting in early trouble, losing to New Orleans yesterday. Hawkins is going to be counting those Denver linebackers. Sometimes you think they've got 20 of them out there. Bradishaw, Tom Jackson, Rizzo, Swenson, they're everywhere. And, of course, next Saturday, college football, UCLA against Washington. UCLA, of course... Back to second in the pack eight last year. They have a good football team this year. That's Saturday NCAA college football. And out comes Scott Laidlaw. Should tip off the final seconds in Dallas. We'll have a convincing win. And Tony Dorsett had an absolutely scintillating night. And Tom Landry wins his 13th consecutive season opener. We'll be right back. Once again, from Texas Stadium, the final score. Dallas. A good story of today's contest. Score is 35-7 Dallas, and they have just overwhelmed the Packers. I think Bart was afraid that quality for quality that Dallas has so many good people that he's still four or five players he thinks class A players short. He'll get them, though. San Diego now 23-20 over Kansas City with a minute and 27 seconds left to play. 